Typical codes and conventions of trailers include titling, institutional information such as the producer's name, the billing block and a loose storyline. Period drama trailers usually include the establishment of a historical setting or time period, introduction of the main character, who is usually a woman, and perhaps the introduction of the woman unveils the plot of the film. Our period drama trailer follows quite closely to the norms of the genre. This is quite a rigid genre with not much legroom for challenge or even development of forms and conventions. However, with the film poster and magazine front cover, there is more legroom to stretch the forms and conventions. During our research we watched many period drama trailers and we discovered that many typical codes and conventions of period drama film trailers are emphasis of era, a dramatic storyline, which often revolves around a woman's love life, and a historical setting. We used all of these to the best of our ability in the trailer. We attempted to emphasise our setting and create a believable historical setting of World War II with the use of a radio broadcast at the beginning of the trailer. We also used props such as a Women's Land Army letter. And lastly, we had our male protagonist talking about the war in some scenes in the trailer. We created a fairly convoluted and interesting plot surrounding our female lead due to the fact that most period dramas refer to the woes of a woman's love life, and if they don't, they're about a significant historical period, for example, the King's Speech. This shows that we used many of the codes and conventions of period drama trailers. One of the main forms and conventions of the period drama genre is creating a believable setting. In our trailer, I think the best setting we created was the party scene to welcome Robbie home from the war. We really considered things like props and mise-en-scene, using black and white photos and apple juice as whiskey. I think that this followed the typical forms and conventions of the genre because it showed a cocktail party, which were popular in the era due to lack of other entertainment. It showed their wealth and it also tells the audience that this is not a film about the plight of the working class. It shows that these are higher class people. Another time I think we used setting well was at the farm, because it shows how the war changed people's lives. People who were once socialised then became farm workers. This shows how the binary opposition of rich versus poor became blurred, because due to the toll of the war, class and status lost some of its importance. Also, judging by my watching of Land Girls, the TV programme, and The Land Girls, the film, it seems that the use of costume and location truly reflect how life was in the war. Another coding convention that we used in our period drama trailer is emotive titles. They also did this in the trailer for The Young Victoria. I liked the way they did this because it added more depth to the story, and one of the made coded conventions of period dramas is lots of emotion, and these titles added emotion. We tried to do this, however, this was a time when we failed to use a period drama code and convention well because our titles were quite confusing. We wanted to help explain the plot of our story through titling because we received some audience feedback that suggested our original titles were a bit random and they were slightly confused about the plot. The reason for this is because we know the plot of our film so well, I think we lost track of the fact that other people don't know what it is. This shows that we attempted to create emotive titles to entice the viewer, but in reality, they were just a bit confusing. A common code and convention of period drama films is patriarchy. Due to the fact that gender equality is only a recent development in the grand scheme of things. In our trailer, it could be said that maybe we challenged a code and convention because our male protagonist wasn't patriarchal. He was shown to care about both of the women in his life. However, some other period dramas represent their male protagonists like this, such as in Atonement, their protagonist, who's also called Robbie, was shown to really truly love the film our protagonist and wasn't patriarchal. A way in which we didn't fully rise to the challenge is the trailer rush. We attempted to do one, but the problem was that we, as a group, knew the whole plot, so it made sense to us. We only realised after we got the audience feedback that it didn't really make sense, so we scrapped it. This is an example of a time when we attempted to use forms and conventions of real media products, but it didn't work out as we wanted. In our film poster, we have stuck to the norm of a picture which roughly reflected our plot line. The pictures of Anna and Robbie looking at each other torn reflects the film's plot because she's worried about him being angry she left and he's worried about being in love with the two women. Due to the fact that all period drama posters are different, it is hard to determine what we have used and what we have developed. However, a common theme which I have come across during my research into period drama film posters is that usually the characters are segregated and they all have their own picture, such as in Sense and Sensibility and Atonement. However, we have not done that. 
we have placed the two main characters in the same slot to show their relationship. This could be a way in which we have developed a normal code of convention because we have not stuck to the typical film poster. We also add the typical title and tagline that are on all film posters. I think that our tagline, Under Every Cloud There Is A Ray Of Sunlight, is a fairly typical period drama tagline because it is full of emotion and it reflects the main plot and the love story. It is supposed to connote that the cloud is the war and the awful things that are happening in the world. However, the ray of sunlight is supposed to represent Anna and Robbie being reunited. We didn't follow the normal code and convention of fonts on film posters because instead of having a thin period type of font, we had a strong, clear and bold font on the poster and the trailer. Therefore, it could be said that we challenged the convention of the text. Due to the fact that the other two media products which we had to create were of the period drama genre, creating the magazine front cover was a bit different because we didn't have to follow many of the codes and conventions except legal things such as the date, price and barcode. Our magazine front cover is a new modern magazine, so we had to look into the different forms and conventions of media products such as V Magazine, Empire and Time Magazine. With this there was more of an opportunity for different types of presentations. We named our film magazine Motion, as in Motion Picture. This follows in the footsteps of many other media products where the names of the products are powerful and memorable, such as Empire and Total Film, which are other film magazines. Therefore, we have sort of used a typical form and convention of film magazines. A big way in which our magazine front cover didn't follow the typical codes and conventions of magazine is that we created a sort of new subgenre of magazines. Instead of creating a plain film magazine where men are usually the target audience, we decided to make one that was more orientated around women, using cover lines that would appeal to women, such as the new actors in Fifty Shades of Grey, because it seems as though that would appeal to women more. It seems that we may have actually developed an aspect of the magazine genre, in how we use the main image on the front cover. Instead of having a typical picture of someone posing as an actor or in action as their character, we've used both. Half of the magazine cover is dedicated to Anna, the protagonist of the film, and the other half is the actress who plays her. This is developed because I've only known one other magazine to do this, and it's Time Magazine. However, Time Magazine is not a magazine about films, it's about serious issues such as politics. A way in which we used a form and convention in creating our magazine front cover is by our use of cover lines. We use cover lines such as the inside scoop and exclusive, which are typical words used on the front covers of magazines to entice possible readers, and I also think that it will entice women more than men. In addition to this, we used the three colour rule of magazine front covers. We used pink, navy blue and white, as we thought that these would be appropriate for a magazine that's attempting to reach a female target audience.